Hi there, Coach Sage of sagerunning.com. Here are the quick training tutorial and running form. We're gonna analyze my Copenhagen Marathon race running form, which was pretty shoddy. I was making some mistakes. Part of it comes down to having tired legs. You get more tired as you go out through a marathon, as well as, I think, being tired from Boston and maybe overtraining a bit, so I didn't have the usual pop in my legs. And we see that with Strava data. We see I was taking closer to 190 steps a minute. Usually I'd be taking about 180 steps a minute. So kind of too short of a stride, too fast of a rate, and we'll do uh, clips showing you the, the Copenhagen Mar Marathon footage clips that a lot of you helped contribute to, and thank you for that, and I'll analyze that. But I just wanted to touch on pelvic tilt here first, talking about your pelvis, so your big bone here, the hips uh, going into your, your abdominal and then also uh, your lower crotch area, I guess. Uh, looking at it from the side, we have two major problems here, and I think I actually have what we call an anterior pelvic tilt. That is, I'm actually, the top part of my pelvis, if it's like a bucket, was actually tilted too far forward, which is caused a lot of times by tight hip flexors, sitting too much with bad form, uh, working at an office desk too much, uh, getting older and not stretching enough. So pulling it down and actually sticking, kind of sticking my, my rear end out and arching my lower back. And what it looks like is I'm sitting in the saddle when I'm running and my hips are down lower, they're back farther. I'm not getting good extension, right? If you're kind of sitting in the saddle with your anterior pelvic tilt, you can't lift your knee as high. It, it takes more work. Uh, whereas the opposite would be a posterior pelvic tilt, which would actually be thrusting out like this, which you kind of want to do. You want to tuck your glute muscles or your, your uh, butt muscles basically uh, to be able to lift your knee high, lift it a lot better like that. But if you do it too far and you have muscle imbalances that cause that, you get what we call a sway back where you're actually kind of leaning back or you're too upright when you're running. So, you know, I need to hit this happy medium at the Copenhagen footage. It seemed like I was limiting my stride mobility. I was taking too fast of a stride rate for the speed. Usually 180 is more ideal, even at marathon pace on a road. So I was limiting my hip power and hip extension. I'm always working on my running form. I've been running year round for 20 years and uh, it's something that's changing over time as I get older, but also with muscle imbalances, mainly my hip flexibility, uh, leg length discrepancy, even what shoes you're wearing could change it. And I see that my stride is very limited at Copenhagen. It wasn't very efficient. Didn't have the pop or the power in my stride. So take a look at the clips now. All right, so now that we've seen those clips, uh, basically I think I need to work on keeping my pelvis in line. That is keeping the, the hip bone uh, just directly under line and being able to get that good knee lift as well as that knee extension, leg extension kick back. And if you see in these running form clips, I'm making more of a concerted effort uh, to take closer to 180 steps per minute, even a little faster in marathon race pace, as well as getting good stride extension, good power, but also running upright, running tall, opening up the diaphragm and the chest, good breathing, and a good arm swing. And actually the last point I wanna to touch on is my arm swing. It's pretty shoddy at Copenhagen. My arms are out a little too far in front of me. I always have wingy elbows, that's a flaw of mine. But they were out too far, there's too much side to side motion, I think I was torquing too much. Uh, whereas when I ran better, when I ran faster and I'm running well, they're back more. I do carry my arms pretty low, but I found that if I'm pulling them back more and I have my hand brushing against my hip and actually going back, I get a better foot plant and more power uh, that way. Some elite runners will carry their arms really high and they're very efficient like that. But I did notice that with arm swing, you don't want to be out in front of you and you don't want to be going side to side. So thanks so much for all your support on here. Again. Uh, you can subscribe uh, for more of these training top videos. Feel free to comment your opinions below. Great to hear from you always. Thumbs up if you like these types of videos. Again, you can check out our uh, training plan website, sagerunning.com, as well as a playlist for more videos. Be sure to subscribe on here. And actually, one more thing. Take the camera here. We want to plug our new, uh, new intern, Trevor Soy. Yep. Uh, he's interning for Sage Running this year. He's a high-level uh, cyclist, racer, and he's helping out. He's getting all these amazing 
film shots and everything. So welcome to Boulder, Trevor. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm originally from Holland, Michigan. I go to Hope College and I'm majoring in business psychology and classical studies. And so I'm just here out in Boulder for the summer uh, doing some research at the Atlas Institute and also helping out Sage with some running and Sage running. So looking forward to a great summer. Yeah, and you can check out his uh, Instagram handle. We'll, we'll plug it here. Uh, and definitely, yeah, stay tuned for more uh, social media plugs and, and all these great film clips uh, Trevor's helping with. So he's the man behind the camera. All thank right. you, Trevor. Yeah, all right. thank you.